Soviet disk detected. To play the Allied missions, please insert the Allied disk. Hello everyone, I'm a broken robot. When we think of history, often many people are fascinated with the last bastions of an empire. Many history buffs are fascinated by the final sacking of Rome, or the last independent Native American tribe in North America, or even the last use of an outdated system or technology. While the idea around being the last of something in a historical or metaphysical lineage is a popular research topic, rarely do people show interest in the last member of a group, whether it be religious, nationalistic, or political. No one seems to care about who the last Knight of Templar was, or the last pirate captain during the 1700s, and yet these stories often shed light on the fallout of an outdated or destroyed ideology, way of life, or political organization. That's why today I'd like to discuss one of the few cases in human history that the final member of an organization was recorded and even documented thoroughly. Sergei Krekalev, the Russian cosmonaut, was considered by historians and aerospace scientists to be the last citizen of the Soviet Union by a mix of political instability and the simple fact that he was trapped aboard a Soviet space station during the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. To truly understand how Sergei became the last Soviet citizen, we'll have to discuss the space race and the Cold War. From 1957 to 1969, the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a scientific battle to be the first nation to put a man on the moon. The USSR was easily the leader for most of the race, with the launching of the first unmanned satellite Sputnik in 1957 and putting the first man in space in 1961. While the USSR had mostly lapped the American developments in the early 1960s, with the United States' superior satellite and rocket production capabilities, the United States streamlined their efforts and managed to launch the Saturn V rocket and produce the Apollo 11 mission and land Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon, which many Americans considered to be the official end of the space race. As the Cold War continued to thaw globally, the US interest in space began to wane, and Soviet financial planning had forced most Roscosmos operations to halt, which was basically the Russian version of NASA. For further manned missions to space, the USSR would take a back seat. In the latter half of the Soviet Union, they did construct the Mir satellite in 1986, being the first modular space station to be established by a country. Additionally, the Mir sat in low orbit to study the effects of low gravity and analyze the biological effects of space. In 1988, our untimely final citizen of the USSR would come into the picture. Sergei's journey to becoming a cosmonaut began when he joined the Soviet space program in 1985. He had a background in the Russian Air Force and graduated from the Baltic State Technical University with flying colors and admiration from much of the Russian science community. He underwent rigorous training at the Yuri Gurgalin Cosmonaut Training Center and was selected for his first launch in 1988. One of Sergei's most remarkable missions and the one that made him famous among the aerospace world occurred during the sudden and rapid collapse of the Soviet Union. In May of 1991, Krakalev launched aboard the Soyuz TM-12 spacecraft to the Mir space station, which also happened to be the mission that put the first British astronaut in space. He had originally planned to spend the bulk of his mission studying the effects of low gravity on various malleable metals, since flight engineers such as himself were always pursuing the next breakthrough in space construction technology. However, as fate and history had it, he would end up spending the bulk of his mission in space as a pseudo-political prisoner. While he was in space, back on Earth things in the Soviet Union were dire. The Soviet Union had begun to rapidly dissolve, leading to political and economic disaster back on Earth. Why the Soviet Union collapsed could be a video in its own, but to sum it up, a combination of internal and external factors contributed to this historical and rapid collapse, including economic stagnation in satellite states, political unrest within Russia itself, ethnic tensions among the Caucasus, and the arms race with the United States that had bankrupt Moscow. Mikhail Gorbachev's policies of openness to change and restructuring aimed at reforming the Soviet systems. He had believed that this would actually save the Soviet Union, but in fact, these reforms inadvertently accelerated the Union's demise by loosening state control and empowering independence movements in the Soviet republics. The failed coup attempt in August of 1991 by hardline Marxists further weakened the central government's authority and opened up a critical power vacuum the satellite states could exploit, paving the way for the declaration of independence by many Soviet republics. 
On December 25, 1991, the Soviet flag was lowered for the last time over the Kremlin, symbolizing the end of the Soviet Union and the beginning of a new era in world history. An important part of this story to understand is that while all of this was going on, nobody stopped to think about what would happen to all of the different Soviet cosmonauts in space that came from all over the former Soviet Union. Nations like Kazakhstan and the Ukraine held the bulk of the former Soviet Union's launch sites, and many of these newly independent nations felt no sense of obligation to help Russia return their spacecrafts, and more importantly, Sergei himself. Sergei's mission was originally scheduled to last only five months, but due to the disintegration of the Soviet Union and the subsequent complications, including financial difficulties and logistical challenges of getting the Mir to line up perfectly with Russian Siberian landing sites, his stay aboard the Mir station was extended far beyond the initial duration. He ended up spending a total of 10 months and 20 days in space, setting a new world record for the longest single spaceflight by humans. Despite the Mir usually carrying multiple cosmonauts at the time, Sergei was the only cosmonaut from Russia tasked with staying aboard the Mir. He was originally assigned for general maintenance and upkeep, along with his regular low-gravity research. But astronauts from other nations would come and go while Sergei remained consistent aboard the Mir satellite. During his extended mission, Krakalev faced numerous hardships, including shortages of supplies and uncertainty about his return to Earth. He would often signal mission control asking when he would be able to return, with the response usually being that there was no way to return him at this time, adding to his fear and isolation. However, he remained dedicated to his work aboard the Mir station, conducting scientific experiments and performing maintenance tasks to keep the station operational. Even when he was living off less than admirable supplies, he continued his research. It should be noted that within Russia itself, the former Soviet space program had seemingly dissolved due to the lack of centralization. Russia, nor any of the former Soviet states, could or wanted to pay the high price for returning a single man. Krekalev's resilience and professionalism during his challenging period earned him widespread admiration and respect within the international space community. It was rare for a single cosmonaut from the USSR to be stationed on the Mir, let alone for as long as 10 months. His experience also highlighted the importance of international cooperation in space exploration, which helped encourage further development of the International Space Station. As Krekalev worked alongside other astronauts from various countries during his time aboard Mir from Britain and France, space exploration took on a more global approach, showing that even under stress, nations could and would get along in space. Finally, after much delay, a joint Russian-German venture planned to bring Sergei home. Germany paid the newly independent Kazakhstan $24 million to revamp and use the former Baknor Cosmodrome that had been claimed by Kazakhstan during its independence. To speed up negotiations, Moscow offered Kazakhstan that they could replace Sergei with an astronaut from Kazakhstan, making it the first time somebody from the country would be in space. At last, Sergei would return to Earth on March 25, 1992. Upon landing, a man appeared before the cameras with the four letters USSR on his suit embazzled with the Soviet red flag that had slightly faded due to his extended time in space and exposure to cosmic radiation. He was unable to stand and could hardly get out of the space capsule that had landed near the Kazakh city of Arlakotnen. Many reporters had gone to the scene of the landing to get a look at this cosmonaut that was abandoned in space. One report described his appearance as pale and sweaty, like a piece of wet dough, but he had a massive smile across his face. By then, the entire world had heard of the forgotten space victim, and it was an international outrage over the former USSR's abandonment of Sergei that pressured Russia to find a way to bring him home. Finally, the last Soviet citizen returned to Earth, and his USSR patch was quickly swapped for a Federation of Russia patch. According to reporters, he was weak and pale, suffering from osteoporosis and other health consequences from his long-term exposure to radiation, but he was happy. According to his media statements at the time, he was extremely happy because he was, quote, standing on solid ground. The return of Sergei was symbolically and literally the end of the Soviet Union and marked the end of an era. After his historic mission aboard the Mir satellite, Krakalev continued his career as a cosmonaut, participating in multiple space flights up until the mid-2000s and serving as a commander on multiple missions to the International Space Station. He retired from active duty in 2007, but remained involved in space-related activities, including training future cosmonauts and promoting space education. Thanks to Sergei's integrity and grit, the Mir space station would continue to be utilized for many years, 
and human progress in space could and would continue. Sergei's extended time in space was at the time the longest a single individual had spent in space, shedding light on past theories of long-term space exploration and life within zero gravity. Feel free to leave a comment down below. What do you guys think about this story? How would you feel if you were abandoned in space for five months? I for one as a robot don't need air, but I bet it would be pretty nerve-wracking for you guys. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something new or were at least entertained. If you've stuck around this long, I'd like to politely ask you to like and subscribe to join the Broken Robot Factory today. If you liked the video, not only does it let me know that you guys want to see more videos, but it helps me out personally in the YouTube algorithm, so hey, thanks a bunch. Also, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future video essays, reviews, and commentary on whatever topic of the week has piqued my interest. I cover everything from fads from the early 2000s to video games, so there's always something for everybody here on the Broken Robot Show. I hope you all have a great day, stay the heck away from space, there's no oxygen there, and stay cool.